Start game now. Oystron is a 1997 homebrew made by Piero Cavina and published by Zype. It is one of the earliest homebrews made for the Atari 2600. Oystron was inspired by a discussion on an Atari programmer's mailing list called the Stella List on how to put more objects on the screen at one time. As Piero worked on the task, he realized he had the foundation of a game, which when finished would contain elements of Defender, Ripoff, and Sinistar. It also won the first and only Stella List contest in 1998. Oystron is a single screen, free floating space shooter for one player only. It has three difficulty levels, beginner, intermediate, and expert. The highly desirable space oysters live in an energy belt that surrounds the planet Stella. In the Irata solar system, your goal is to collect their pearls and defend them from many other critters that want them as well. You use the joystick to fly your ship and the button to continuously fire missiles. You can blast away space oysters which once destroyed yield space pearls. However, be advised that apparently some space oysters take more shots to destroy than other, even though they all look like the same kind of asteroid flying at you. Once the pearls are released, you can collect them up to two at a time by flying over them. You can then place them in an empty space in the pearl zone, which is on the left side of the screen, by pressing the button in the space you want to put them at. If you manage to fill a horizontal row with pearls, they will disappear and you will get a bomb to use later in the game. However, you can only carry six at a time. There are several unnamed enemies in this game, so I will do my best to give them some sort of name that fits them. Now, most of the enemies, no matter what their names, will try and steal your pearls if they reach all the way to the left side of the screen, but you can destroy them either beforehand or after they take a pearl in order to retrieve it, which they will drop after you blow them up. However, some act differently. For instance, the space donuts will hang out in a row and slowly consume all the pearls. The space bombs will destroy the entire row if they reach all the way to the left side immediately. And the space spongebobs, which are indestructible and they tend to come when a pearl escapes to the right side of the screen, will not steal the pearls, but they will make the rows rotate vertically in higher levels and in higher difficulties until you blast them off screen to the left. Now I will issue a warning before I show you this part of the video as it contains lots of flashing so if you're sensitive to flashing video you may want to skip this. Once the bar on the bottom of your screen fills up, Oystron himself will appear. When he does, the button that you use to fire missiles is now used to drop the bombs you have in your supply. The goal is to place a bomb in his path so that when he moves over it he will be destroyed. After he is destroyed, you will enter a warp phase where the screen flashes and everything moves much faster until the play screen finally resets at a higher difficulty. Point wise you get 10 points for every space oyster you hit, 30 points for every enemy formation you destroy, and 1530 points for destroying Oystron along with a bonus of 100 points for every unused bomb in your supply. You also get 100 points for everything you destroy during the warp phase. You can earn an extra life for every 4,000 points, but you can only hold up to 4 lives at a time and you won't earn extra lives when the score is between 75,000 and 99,990 points. Graphically speaking, I think the game is pretty solid with a nice variety of enemies, although the warp phase did bother my eyes to look at. The sound effects were nicely done as well and I would consider this a family friendly game. Now, you cannot really find this on eBay, but if you go to AtariAge.com, they have it in their store and you can get it for $20 a cartridge. And this is also found on the Activision Anthology for the Game Boy Advance, which is what I'm using here. So what did I think of Oystron? Well, personally, I'm not really a big fan of these free floating single screen shooters. And I also thought it took a long time to get to the Oystron level, but I do think the game itself is well made and I did enjoy it a little. So if this type of game looks interesting to you, you may want to check it out. So where am I going to rank Oystron? Well, I view homebrews as their own category. And the only other homebrew I've reviewed is Okie Doki a puzzle game on a previous episode and I do actually enjoy this more than Okie Doki so for my first ranking of homebrew Atari 2600 games Oystron will be number one and Okie Doki will be number two. Oystron it's not my cup of space tea but it is well made for those who like this type of game. 
I'm a member of the Retro Junkies Network, and so is Ferga, the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast, and he'll be covering this on a future episode, which you can find on iTunes. If you enjoyed this video, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons? Totally appreciate that. Also, be sure to check out my other videos with over 150 covering Sega, Atari, Nintendo, and more. There should be something for just about any retro fan. Thank you guys for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Nose for Gamer. Take care, and remember, adding space to any word makes it more futuristic and cool sounding, like space broccoli, space ravioli, and space cotton swab.